So now we have one of many vulnerabilities in the Linux IO U-Rings subsystem. So this is a new system call interface in the Linux kernel, and it allows multiple system calls to be queued up and executed asynchronously. So when you think of normal system calls in a normal operating system, it's basically user space calling into kernel space, and kernel space does something for user space, user space is blocked or context switched out, and then eventually when kernel is done, it returns back information to user space. This is a new me mechanism where basically the kernel can go off and do whatever it's going to do and later on get back to user space with whatever information it was requesting. Fundamentally, the reason that this new system was created was for performance. So both uh, reducing the amount of overhead from calling into kernel space from user space and by basically dealing with situations in which kernel space might be blocking, waiting for, you know, for instance, information to come back from a slow spinning disk drive. So there's two fundamental ways that this IOU ring can be used. Either A, user space will queue up a bunch of things and call a single system call to tell the kernel to go ahead and handle these now, or it can queue them up and just wait for a periodic mechanism within the kernel. There's going to be a thread that's going to pull on the queue, and that'll just handle stuff whenever it finds it. So IOU ring is new, and it is subject to frequent changes and frequent bugs. So there's a whole lot of things that have been found uh, very recently, and this is going to be one of them. So just to visualize what's going on here, there was another attack paper, which you can look at later, that provided some nice graphics. So we said user space is going to queue up information into some shared memory that the kernel is going to utilize as well. So this would be the setup to say, dear kernel system, I'm going to be allocating some space for the submission queue and the completion queue, and then these are going to be the submission queue entries. So basically, kernel space sends back a file descriptor, user space uses mmap in order to allocate space for these. Then, when user space is queuing things up, it's going to create these submission queue entries, put them in the submission queue, and when everything is queued up, it's going to call IOU ring enter, and that is the system call to kernel space saying, hey, I want you to specifically start chewing on that submission queue. Kernel space is then going to go ahead and read new submission queue entries, and there's two situations that it could occur. So kernel space could have a submission queue entry that is not going to block, in which it can just immediately complete. So that would be, for instance, if you know user space just requested some information that kernel space has readily available, then kernel space can just you know get that information, put it in the completion queue, and be done with it. But in the more common case, where, for instance, the kernel may have to go out to some peripheral, then it can't complete it immediately, and so it's going to take that submission queue entry, put it into an asynchronous work queue, and handle that as information becomes available. Eventually, as information is available, the kernel space will write things into the completion queue, so completion queue entries into the completion queue, and user space is able to just periodically check and see if any completion information is available yet. So this particular vulnerability, the researchers said they didn't find it via manual auditing, but instead were using the off-the-shelf syscaller uh, fuzzer, and this fuzzer is just used to fuzz syscalls in Windows and, and Linux. And they basically found a bug, found a crash, and then they had to work backwards to try to figure out, you know, what was actually causing it. Initially, they thought it was used after free, and ultimately they found it was due to uninitialized memory access. So you can check out the details of that later on, but for now, I have taken the relevant code, I have chopped it down, made a smaller portion with a few hints to try to help you find it. And what I want you to do now is go find the flaw. So this is a uninitialized data access vulnerability. So there's going to be some code that I give you that I say this is the code that accesses uninitialized data. So that'll give you, you know, a hint of what kind of data could potentially be, you know, uninitialized. Then I give you some code earlier that is the initialization that is incomplete. And so that'll give you some hints and limitations on what kind of data, you know, could be applicable. And so basically, I just want you to go back and forth. You're going to check out the actual code from the Linux kernel. You're going to, uh, you know, have some hints on the website that tell you sort of where to look, and then just generally focus on the area in the hinted code. And this should be reasonably tractable to find this in a reasonable amount of time.